We come together now for a uh, time of prayer. This is an opportunity that we have to lift up those joys, those concerns, those thanksgivings that we might be having for ourselves or for other persons, for things happening in our world or the community around us. As we come together in prayer this morning, i got some folks that we need to remember. Uh, Chris Rose, the, the guitar player that comes occasionally, he went on vacation, and I'm told while on vacation... Pardon? Can I say Yeah, fill, fill us in on that one. Yeah. Last Sunday, Angel and her daughter, they were in, uh, what's it called? Um, Jekyll Island. Jekyll Island, Island. that's it, yeah. Uh, they'd gone somewhere to get a camera that they'd lost on the beach, and they came back. They were going about an hour and a half, two hours. And Angel found Chris on the floor in the bathroom, passed out. And uh, they rushed him to the hospital. His blood sugar was 1295, and Kathy tells me that's pretty high. Uh, and he was in a diabetic coma. His kidneys had started failing. And uh, as of yesterday, he had finally started to come out a little bit, but he's going to be in the hospital for a while longer. And he's down in, he's in Beaufort, South Carolina. Is that right, Beaufort, Georgia? No. Uh, South Carolina. I think that's right. I'll let you know if it's not. Anyway, he's there by himself right now. She had to come home today and bring her, her daughters back to be with her dad. And uh, she's going to go back tomorrow and then come back and then go to Richmond. for th it's, it's, it's bad. But uh, you know, he finally has started to come around a little bit. And uh, they've got his blood sugar down. But uh, sick, sick guy, real sick guy. Y'all really pray for him a lot. So Thanks. pray for Chris. Also, uh, many of you may know Ralph Gilly and his wife Leslie. Apparently she was uh, snake bit at some point this week. Uh, the latest I saw on Facebook from about five or six hours ago was that the anti-venom seems to be doing well, and she is beginning to recover from that. So please keep uh, uh, Ralph and Leslie in your prayers. Also, I was talking with Dell before the service. Uh, her brother, Bill Beverly, is in some serious condition, so let's please keep uh, him in our prayers. Uh, what else is there that we need to be lifted up in prayer this morning? Pat? That's right. Alberta had some surgery on her foot, and she's got about another week of recovering from that. Bill? Let's talk about how to move this I'll, I'll, I'll talk to uh, My first wife's brother, Bobby Phillips, grandson, and I don't know the details, but I have found out that he was shot for some reason or other and is in the hospital on life support right now. Uh, He's had some ups and downs, according to his mother, but uh, he does need our prayers, and, and if I can get more information, I will, but anyway, that's, it, it, is, it is part of my extended family. Okay. So pray for him, please. His name's Matt. Matt. Okay. What else? Let's also keep Sandy Wright in our prayers. She had some kidney stones blasted this week and is recovering from that. And keep Jeff Wright in our prayers as he goes into surgery, I think, on the 25th. He's going to have back surgery and will be down for six to eight weeks recovering from that. So please keep uh, Jeff and Sandy in your prayers. What else we need to lift up? Debbie? Um, if you could please keep my sister-in-law, Maureen Myrie, in your prayers. Um, we've been praying for her. She has a rare autoimmune system disease, and she's all out of days, and she has to go back to work this year. She's a, she's a teacher, and she has to go back to work, and they know that stress is part of a trigger 
So if you can please keep her in your prayers. And then also my mom had an echocardiogram this week. If you can please keep her in your prayers, there's a, a good chance she's going to have to have heart surgery to replace two valves. If you would keep my stepfather, Herbert Mills, in your prayers, his um, health continues to deteriorate. We're at the point where we need to put in a handicap ramp, and David and I are going to go down and attempt to do that this Wednesday and Thursday. So pray for David and me as we get into the construction business. <laughs> what else? Lisa, Show Walter, Giles. Okay. What else? Yeah, he surprised me. It's just a quick visit, though. They're in for something, and then they're gone again. Glad you're glad you're with us today. Glad to have some visitors that uh, have a connection to the church and and come back once a year or so to visit with us. Glad y'all here with us, ladies. What? I remember that first long distance drive I took by myself, so uh, it is a feat. What else? Okay, Jesse and friends are traveling from Atlanta. What else? Well, let's go before the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> As the heat of summer, Lord, sort of begins to, to bear down upon us, we're re reminded of that, those hot days, those, those sometimes humid days, those times when outside, inside, it just doesn't seem to, to matter if you don't have air conditioning. It's all sort of the same, sort of muggy. But we just are thankful that you have blessed us so that we can continue to be in ministry in times like this when we can get out on the sidewalk for a couple of days each week and hand out food like we did this week Lord we're grateful that we were able to do that and to meet the needs of those folks we're grateful that you continue to let us have a, a prayer ministry where we can lift up the, the concerns and, and, and the the things happening in our lives. And Lord, you know, there's just so much to be thankful for. There's so much that we can be glad that, that we can probably go home and turn on the air conditioner, that we can go home and, and, and kick back in our, in our comfortable chairs. Not everyone has that, Lord, and we need to be reminded of that. We need to be reminded that the creature comforts we take for granted are indeed comforts that not all of us possess. We can all, though, turn to you. We can all trust in you to bless us, trust in you to, to love us, trust in you to guide us, even though here on this earth we may be at totally different places, we may be at totally different situations in our lives. The one constant is you. Don't depart from us. Don't turn away from us, please, Lord. Turn towards us. Pour your love out upon us. Let us feel your presence. Let us feel your anointing in our lives. Let us know that indeed we have heard your still, small voice and that when we come together, we come together as the body in this place and that where two or three of us are gathered, that you are in our midst Open our spiritual eyes this morning, Lord, and let us look around and let us see you. Let us see your power and your presence and let us see you as you lead us out from the doors of this place and into our community. Let us see you as you call us into mission and ministry in so many different ways. Let us see you and feel you, Lord, and know that you have not abandoned us, but that you have called us forth and sent us into mission and ministry. Be with those that we have mentioned. 
comfort them, bring healing to their bodies, bring peace in the midst of their grief. Help us, Lord, to be your arms, to be the shoulders that they need to lean on or cry on. Help us, Lord, as we seek to be your people. We ask this in the name of Christ who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.